Principal Lyon, and I'm here to say Welcome back from your holiday You were gone for a week, but now you're back It's time for our quarterly assembly wrap Vice Principal Schwarzkopf on the mic Telling you what to do during the bus driver's strike There's a bulletin board near the entrance of the school So you can coordinate your daily carpool There have been a number of students leaving campus To go to the Dairy Queen Dairy across the street uh, Please be advised to use the crosswalks as you, you will be fined for jaywalking by municipal police. Miss Kathy is here to help escort you across the street if you do need it. Please be smart, use street safety smarts. I love all of you. Construction is done now, the parking lot's sick. Parents got their own lane to make drop-offs quick. Got a shed for the bikes, but the lots of yours. So as we all give a hoot, go Strigger Falls! Go Strigger Falls! Go Strigger Falls! Go Strigger Falls! Go Welcome back, students, to Peaport High. You all are looking healthy and happy today. I'm so glad to see you. Now, if we could just quiet down for today's assembly, it'd be much appreciated. Calm down, everyone. Quiet down. I know that that wrap was really exciting. It was just an introductory wrap to bring you back into the school year. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and give you some announcements with a little bit of fun. Yeah. Because we're all about fun here. Peaport is all about fun. And the fighting stricken forms. Go Owls! Hoot, 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 hoot. Oh. That's right. Yes. Thank you. Whoever has the laser pointer needs to stop it. Guys, <laughs> come on. Guys. Okay. We have fun here. We do. Uh, so, uh, Vice Principal S. Yes, Principal Lyon. What did you do over your spring break? I spent the entire break knitting five different costumes for my one elderly cat and setting them up in different silent movie poster scenarios. I love it. I love it. You're using crafts. Uh -huh. There's probably math involved. So much math. There's a little bit of, sure, English. I don't know. Absolutely. Um, books. I don't know. Silent movies. Uh-huh. Art. Mm-hmm. It was a really nice time. What did you do on your spring break? Um, I graded the... <gasps> Tyler! That's you. I know it's you. Mm. I know you're make. Was that a sneeze or was that Tyler? I feel like it was a sneeze. All right, Tyler, I apologize. Uh, see me after assembly, please. Uh, I graded the endless stack of papers um, for my various classes because I am a principal and I'm also a teacher. I did know that. I'm also a teacher. You teach multiple things. You teach mythology. Um, sure. Uh, arts and legends. Yep. And arts and rock climbing. Arts and legends. Arts and legends. Mm. I believe is one of your classes. Sure. All right. Uh, well, well, I'm gonna. I, I know that there's a lot of things that. Uh, I, yep. We need to get through. So I'm gonna let Principal Lyon take the floor. Thank you. And I'm gonna see you guys later. Thank you, <coughs> Miss S. She's a Delight. All right. So we're starting off the quarter right. I'm going to give you guys the um, results of the money earned so far for the various fundraisers that you all are uh, a part of. As you know, we have a lot of clubs here at Peaport High. And let's just jump right into it. All right. Okay. So, okay. Okay. All right. Up first, we have the choir candy bar sale. Look at this poster, the choir. Choir. Look at that. Oh God, that's, that's beautiful. All right. So you guys haven't quite reached your goal yet, but I'm still very proud. And I just have this little thing to say to you guys. Um, let me see. I wrote it down. <laughs> wow. We may not be close to a hundred grand, <sighs> but you all are starbursts when it comes to selling those candy bars. Now take five and don't let this goal slip through your butter fingers. <laughs> Twix bar, all right. Thank you for the, the smattering of applause. I really appreciate it. All right, up next, up next, we have the band club with their beautiful their beautiful poster. This, this is, if you guys didn't know, is a little thermometer 
that tells you how much money they've raised. So, oh, it's, mm, it's not quite there. You guys have, however, surpassed your, your first goal of a tuba, a new tuba. I'm so proud of you. Look at that, look at that. You guys don't quite know what a tuba looks like, but you try and I appreciate it. Look at that, that drum, you nailed the drum. Too bad we're not raising money for a drum. All right, uh, so, you <laughs> so you surpassed your starting goal of a tuba. Good job. You're well on your way to a marimba uh, and some soft knitted mallets. I love it, I enjoy it. They make a soft noise. And onto a new uh, brass section spit trough that will directly drain into the parking lot. I, I think you guys are really close. I love the pies that you, you decided to draw. And also it's pockmarked, this poster's pockmarked like your faces. Uh, all right, also a side note, I need a, a bigger order sheet. There's not enough room for all the pies I want on my current order sheet. So if I, if I talk to Chelsea or maybe Sasha, I would love a, an extra order sheet. Thank you so much. Yeah. Give a good round of applause, the band. Yeah, thank you, thank you. All right, okay, up next we have the math club. All right, math club. <sighs> fan, fan favorite, neighborhood favorite, uh, holiday gift wrap, holiday gift wrap, wow, hmm. You guys always seem to be the favorite, just earning more money than everybody else for math. Don't understand that. Um, so uh, you really have reached your goal and you've surpassed it, so good job. I, I know you guys work with numbers, but I work with the wholesaler. So, wholesaler, wholesaler? Uh, so I'm gonna look into this, because this doesn't seem right. Also, this poster is strangely phallic and I don't appreciate it. Um, I, I don't appreciate this. All right. All right, up. Up next, we have the chess team who's selling lollipops. Look at their beautiful poster. I, I personally enjoy this poster the most. Um, thank you all for pushing those really, those sugary sweet treats. Um, every day in the hallway, in the classrooms, near the lockers, in the stairwell, outside the teacher's lounge, sometimes in the teacher's lounge, janitor's closet, selling those in the garden outside, on the rooftop, in the parking lot, in the, in the recycling bay, sometimes in my car. And I, I, I just wanna say, please stop. We've bought enough lollipops. We've bought enough. You're really close to your goal. Can you just please stop? Thank you, good job everybody. Good, good, good job, thank you. Thank you, all right, oh. Here's, yeah, I'm really psyched about this. This one's my, it's my club, it's the Scholastic, well it's not my club, it's a, it's a county Scholastic Bookathon. Let's see how many books we've read so far, not a lot. You guys are not reading books. Books, reading is, oh yeah, that's a sad, that's sad. Look at that, look at that, words, books. All right, so you guys are dangerously low on the amount of books that you are supposed to be reading for the county. We get a lot of money uh, for, this, for uh, various programs here. If you guys read books, shows us we're being successful as Peaport High. Hoot, hoot, hoot. Um, whoever said books suck in the back? It's stuck. <laughs> See, sounded like books suck. Anyway, well, I decided, like, in lieu of this, I, I want to give you guys some books that are acceptable to read. So um, I brought some classics that uh, are covered in... Uh, English class and you can find in the library and that's totally fine. Let's see what we got here. What what do we got here? Ah, we got Wuthering Wuther Wuthering Heights. 
Withering, Withering Heights. Uh, it's, it's a book written by a lady. We should all be reading books by ladies. All right. Uh, it, those heights were withered, withered. It's a good one. All right, next book. Yeah, you can check that out. It's great. Not that one. How about this one? Oh, Alice in Wonderland. Classic, classic novel. Uh, lady, lady falls into a tree, chasing a rabbit. Rabbit keeps going. What time is it? It's a hoot. Damn. Uh, drink me, eat me. I get big, I get small. It's great. Love it. All right. <coughs> Uh, next up, is this helpful? I think this is helpful for everyone here to, ooh, Catcher in the Rye. So this is a, this is a great, this is a great book uh, for your age group, uh, 14, roughly 14 is a good age to read this, especially if you're a boy. You're gonna relate very, very strong to Holden, uh, who calls people a bunch of phonies. And also there's an F-bomb in it. So if that gets you to read the book, then read the book. All right, let's see, up next. Uh, let's see, oh, 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 this one's just my, my personal favorite. So, so this is a, there's a, there's a string of murders in a small town. Uh, lady cop has to go investigate. Ooh, but there's already a guy, like, gentleman cop there. Ooh, do they fall in love? Maybe, I don't know. But look at the lady on the back. She's a smart dresser. This is a good book because you can tell by the lady on the back. Highly recommend it, but really just skip about 30, 30 pages in. Just skip a whole like chapter or two because it's just erotic sex. And nobody here needs to be reading that. Um, you can borrow this at any time. All right. Up next. Up next. We got Lolita. Don't read it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we got Kurt Vonnegut's Cat's Cradle. Cat's Cradle. Um, so I have been told that I need to enjoy Kurt Vonnegut. So you are now going to be told the same. You should all read Kurt Vonnegut. You should read Cat's Cradle and his various other works. He is a great author. I've been told repeatedly by many people, mostly dudes. So <laughs> here's that's a book option. All right. We got a couple more. Just a few more. Just a, just a few more. Just, just a, just a few more. Watership Down. It's about bunnies. But not what you think. Because these bunnies are heroes. They're leaders. The, it's an epic novel about group adventures that also has a lot of murder in it, and it's kind of a bummer. Oh, Watership Downer. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. I'm about to wrap up here. We got Crime and Punishment. And then we also got Great Expectations. Two <laughs> great novels, wildly different scopes of the world. This one's Russian. This one, I think, is English. Yeah, yeah. It's Charles Dickens. <laughs> it's straight up English. <laughs> um, uh, I, I would say go with this one just on sheer size. Let's just compare sizes. All right, we want to get those book numbers up. Let's get these book numbers up, everybody. Oh, all right. So here are some great book options for everybody. To inspire you further in your exploits, I am now going to introduce our lovely Miss S with a wonderful presentation on Mr. El Edgar Allen Poe.
am Edgar Allan Poe. I was born not in January 19, 1809 in Boston, Massachusetts. By my second year, my actor father, David Poe Jr., had abandoned our family, and my actress mother, Elizabeth Arnold Hopkins Poe, had died of consumption. I was taken in by the Allen family. I took their name, though I was never officially adopted. John Allen, my would-be father and successful Scottish merchant, did not care for me, but his wife, Frances Allen, did. I was well taken care of, well educated, if not severely disciplined, and stayed with the Allens into my adulthood. I did fine in school and was known for my athleticism. At 15, I swam six miles against the current in the James River. Around this time is when my first love, an older woman, died of brain cancer. I spent a very long time In 1826, John sent me off to the newly formed University of Virginia with only the most minimal of funds. I racked up a whirlwind of gambling debts in an attempt to feed and clothe myself. John did not approve and cut me off entirely. At the worst, I destroyed the furnishings in my own room and burned them to keep warm. After a year, I left, well before getting my degree in ancient and modern languages. Instead of school, I decided to enlist in the United States Army under the fake name Edgar A. Perry. I got paid $5 a month, which doubled after about a year. As I rose up through the ranks from private to sergeant major for artillery, I managed to also public, publish my first book, Tamerlane and Other Poems. Only 50 copies were printed, so the public didn't really notice. I had signed up for five years with the Army, but decided to leave after two years. I confessed to my commanding officer that my name was actually Edgar Allan Poe, and I was four years younger than I had originally claimed. That officer, Lieutenant Howard, agreed to discharge me, but only if I reconciled with John Allen. I spent months writing him letters with no response. Turns out that my foster mother, Frances Allen, had died of consumption, just like my real mother. I arrived home the day after she was buried. As my life continued to unfold in and out of the military, I struggled to find and keep work as a writer, which I committed to fully after my elder brother Henry died in 1831. I was publishing my works before and after his death to little or no popularity. I became a writer critic and wrote critiques that were considered very harsh. I was publicly known as coarse and headstrong, but privately I was really very sweet and loving. In 1935, I married Virginia Clem, who was my 13-year-old cousin, and falsified her age in 1836 for our wedding ceremony. Around the same time, I applied for a job in the Taylor administration. By Taylor, I mean Tyler. But I never got hired to that custom house that I had hoped to be hired at. My life continued to be fiscally tight, but generally, I was happy until 1842, when Virginia began showing signs of the very illness that had haunted me and the women that I love for my entire life tuberculosis. I dove harder into drink to dull the pain, but it did nothing to prevent her death in 1847. 
On October 3rd, 1849, I was found delirious in the streets by Joseph W. Walker, who sent me to the hospital. I died on October 7th, 1849, at 40 years old, in Baltimore, Maryland. And to this day, no one knows how or why. I could go on for a limited time about my life, but what you really need to know is this. I wrote horror, thriller, suspense, science fiction, and critiques. I revolutionized them all. I dove deeper into the psyche of killer and victim than anyone had dared before me. I wrote guilt that could claw a man to pieces and fear as gnarled as the hand that gripped within. I did not shy away from the fantastic, but I made little light of death. No one had yet dreamt of the detective crime thriller before my tale of ratiocination that put a one C Auguste Dupont on the trail of an orangutan with the razor blades in the murders of Rue Morgue. It was 1841, and two years later I published a similarly genre, The Gold Bug. All of this logical deduction of full 46 years before Sherlock began his coke habit. Of course, the world didn't actually recognize my genius until 1845, when I published my most undoubtedly famous work to date, The Raven. So famous, in fact, that even today, my poem is immortalized on the fields of feet and balls with the Baltimore Ravens and their mascot, Poe. You should read The Raven and all of my other poems, short stories, and essays, and decide for yourself how you feel about my work. Your own Vice Principal Schwar Schwarzkopf, wink, is a big fan and has requested that I read her favorite poem of mine for Annie. Thank heaven the crisis, the danger is past. The lingering illness is over at last. The fever called living is conquered at last. Sadly I know I am shorn of my strength as no muscle <coughs> I move as I lie at full length. But no matter, I feel I am better at length. So I rest so composedly now in my bed that only any beholder might fancy me, di me dead might start at beholding me, thinking me dead. The moaning and groaning, the sighing and sobbing are quieted now with that horrible throbbing at heart. Ugh, that horrible, horrible throbbing. The sickness, the nausea, the pitiless pain have ceased with the fever that maddened my brain, with the fever called living that burned in my brain. And oh, of all tortures that torture the worst has abated the terrible torture of thirst for the naphthaline river of passion accursed. I have drank of a water that quenches all thirst of a water that flows with a lullaby sound from a spring but a very few feet underground, from a cavern not very far down underground. And ah, let it never be foolishly said that my room it is gloomy and narrow my bed, for a man never slept in a different bed, and to sleep you must slumber in just such a bed. My tantalized spirit here blandly reposes, forgetting or never regretting its roses, its old agitations of myrtles and roses. For now, while so quietly lying, it fancies a holy odor, a bout it of, of pansies, a rosemary odor, commingled with pansies, with rue and the beautiful Puritan pansies. So it lies happily, bathing in many, a dream of the truth and the beauty of Annie, drowned in a bath of the tresses of Annie. She tenderly kissed me, she fondly caressed, and then I fell gently to sleep on her breast, deeply to sleep from the heaven of her breast. While the light was extinguished, 
she covered me warm. She prayed to the angels to keep me from harm, to the queen of the angels to shield me from harm. So I lie so composedly, now in my bed, knowing her love that you fancy me dead. And I rest so contently, now in my bed, with her love at my breast that you fancy me dead, that you shudder to look at me, thinking me dead. But my heart, it is brighter than all the many stars in the sky, for it sprinkles with Annie. It glows with the light of the love of my Annie, with the thought of the light of the eyes of my Annie. Now, ponder my words as you listen to the beautiful melodics of MX Valentino. Hands as a 
chance was taken or a mistake that you won't be making well at the least let me down easy at the least let me down easy Was that talented? Bet you didn't. Pure I'm delight. Grateful. Absolutely. Oh, uh, Edgar Allan Poe has left, <laughs> but he also gave me some word searches for you kids to do, and he bought a Butterfinger for the first, now king size, for the first person to bring me back the word search filled in completely. This is 100% true, and I highly recommend that you come see me after the assembly so I can give you your word search. We can have a nice time. I'd love to give somebody a Butterfinger from Edgar Allan Poe. Marie, Tony, I know you both love words. You're part of the you're, word club. You're part of the word club. You, you didn't raise any money, so you didn't get a poster. Also, you're really bad at naming your club, considering you're really into words. Yeah. W Scrabble I feel like club? You should wor I feel Bog like you should work on it a little bit. Boggle League? Come on, guys. Something. All right. So, what do we got? What do we got next? You're not mic'd. I know. <laughs> what do we got next? Uh, we have a presentation. Oh, by, from who? By our esteemed art teacher. Art teacher. Art teacher. Are you referring to Mr. Rivera? I am. Well, oh. the one, the only, the charming. Give uh, it up for him. Mr. Rivera. All right. Stand up. <laughs> Stand up. Not you. Hello, students. As you know, every year, I typically <laughs> give a warm, heartfelt speech about how much I cherish you all, how much I love you. I've worked in this job for 30 some odd years, and nothing has ever given me more joy until I met all of you. In the 30 years I have been teaching art, I have never needed psychiatric help until now. I want you to all know that I hate every one of you. This graduating class, Actually, how about I just go down the list for all of you? <laughs> <clears throat> Starting with our school mural, the painting team that I had assigned, you will all be getting detention. And you are pending expulsion with my meeting with the principal. Stormy Daniels, in one of her movies, does not represent school spirit or have a good outlook on our school. Now moving on to the art walk. I have a big list here for all of you, so we're gonna breeze through this. As you know, we have an art walk every year. And this is to help us raise money. A lot of our school's money comes from the art department. But it seems that nobody listened to the rules and parameters of the art walk and its entries. So I would like to give you a specific list of what is not okay in the art walk. Smoky bears setting a wildfire. Cock fights with no roosters. A fist fight between myself and Miss Lyon. Trump and Putin enjoying each other's company. Cheech and Chong ripping the bong. King Kong in a thong. A dong hitting a gong, and of course your personal nudes. None of these are okay. And to say the least, I think you all know that Art Walk is now canceled, and you will all be receiving Fs. Now, moving on to 
our band group who performed for the elementary school across the way just last week. I will have you know that your rendition of sexual healing was not acceptable and we are asked that we are never to enter the school again or have any form of communication. Those children and their parents are all suing us. And now I would like to go on to a list of stolen objects. Starting with vandalizing the school statue. I don't know where you put it, but we need it back. I know that you stole supplies from my studios. You melted it down and you moved it. We also have two stolen tap, we have two stolen textbooks, and that's a total of $800 for this school. And then, as you all know, we had a charity of grandmothers. They all came in. They were going to quilt the world's largest quilt for us, and we were going to show this and use it as donations, maybe give it to any sort of children's youth that could use such a thing. We would like the grandmas back. We don't know where you took them. We don't know how. But myself included, would all like to know where our gran grandmothers went. I have known her since I was little. She is the most important woman in my life. And if I don't have every piece of her returned, I will hunt every one of you down. Now, another object that I've, known, I've noticed is stolen is that we no longer have any paint. And my car has recently been painted. And I know it was all of you because I taught you those techniques. Furthermore, when I was driving and taking my car to AutoZone to be repainted, I opened my glove box and there was a pack of rabid squirrels in there. Come on, guys. It, thank you. <coughs> now I have to go see the hospital, and they don't think that I have more than a month to live. So. Great. Unacceptable. To say the least, because of all these issues, the art department will be closing. You have cost the school thousands of dollars, my own mental health, and the fire on the art wing was not at all helpful. And so now I'd like to turn the, sto turn the floor back to MX Valentino, the wonderful woman that for some reason okayed sexual healing being sung to a bunch of elementary schoolers. confessions that I make so many times in a day. Please don't worry that I'm smitten with all that you are. Just take it as a sign that you can make it this far. I, oh, that you can put me
I cannot tell you how much I appreciate the entire art department from MX Valentino all the way down to Mr. Rivera. Mm -hmm. And it is absolutely unacceptable. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All of these things that we are just learning about right now, mm -mm. I want to see every single person in my office. Anyways. All 500 of you. All 500. In both of our offices. All grades. Simultaneously after this presentation. After this assembly. Stay seated for now. Yeah, We're not yeah why are you standing? Excuse me. Excuse me. Sit down, Samantha. We didn't excuse you. There is one more presenter. And maybe, just maybe, he can shake you to your core enough to give a hoot to about give, P. Port Junior High. To give a hoot. And maybe beyond. He's very passionate. And he makes sure that we go to state every year. We go to state. So please, welcome. Give it up. I want to hear it, owls. Give it up for Coach Furman. As I have just learned that you've done to, to Mr. Rivera, you have a fire in you, and that is good. You will need it when we go to state this year. Every one of you will have to give 110%. 110%. Math club, shut it. Shut it, nerds. 110%. I know where the fire came from. I know why the art department still burns. I know why the books are on red. You see it in the world around you. There is something wrong and you don't know what it is. And it's not just Mr. Riviera crying. <laughs> Hilarious as that is. Come on, nerd, give it up. <laughs> I love how they clap on command for me. That is power, children. That is power. When you give 115%, that is what you can do. But still, you see the world, and it looks like it's falling apart around you. You've made it this far through the school year without being shot, and that is an accomplishment. But it shouldn't be, and you know that. You looked at the book club list, read 1984, and said, what is this, a blueprint for our democracy? And you know it is wrong. You can feel it, even if you don't have the words. And that is what I want to tell you today. You know things that are wrong right now. Right now. You think Robert Jordan is a good author. He is not. He simply stole from the metamyth, gave it new names, and published it. Fifty Shades of Grey is a bad book. It is not. It garnered more wealth than this school will see in a thousand lifetimes. You think America is great. It is not. It's not bad, but it is not great. 
But when I tell you you are wrong, do you feel it in you, that burning sensation? You want to come lash out at me with 125% of your energy, 125%, you want to give it to me right now. Because it hurts to be wrong. And that is why you need to stop burning this school down. Because only through education can you learn how to be wrong. It'll train you in being wrong. It is how all learning starts, is being wrong. You cannot learn to box until you learn how to take a hit. You learn to drive by taking a corner. Learn to fly by, I don't know, crashing, I guess. And you learn to learn by being wrong. And you'll have to take that with you when you go out in the world. Because people will tell you things that are wrong. You will hear it from government officials. You will hear it from the police, your family members, your friends. They will tell you things that you know are wrong. And when you tell them they are wrong, they will lash out at you. They will want to lash out at you 125%, and you will have to resist them 130%. Or you will end up like Mr. Rivera, sobbing in a chair behind me, wondering where your life went wrong. 1984 is not a blueprint for our democracy. It feels like it. And when you read it, I know that you saw Winston and you saw Julia. And you did not empathize with those characters. You did not want to be them, ground up by the machine and spat out. But that is the path you are on right now because you do not know how to stop being wrong, because it hurts when you try. So you simply do what the machine tells you, what your teachers tell you, what the police tell you, what the officials tell you. <laughs> I love that look on her face. When you know in your heart it is wrong. But 1984 is in fact a blueprint for a better world. There is hope in that story in the part none of you read because your English teacher did not assign it to you. And you would have had to go 160% to have read it. Do you know, English teacher? I'm the vice principal, but... There's multiple teachers I am gesturing at. <laughs> the entire assembly behind me. Because <laughs> I am stalling for time. <laughs> the, a the afterword. What about a brave new world? <laughs> That's a book. <laughs> the the afterword discusses the nuances of new speak in past tense. It discusses how concepts like all men are created equal could not be translated into new speak. Concepts that you must learn when you go out into this world. Because the world around you does not agree. It will give you someone to look down on. It will give you someone to hate. Because it wants you to feel better than them. That is what the machine needs out of you. To turn you into Winston. To grind you up and make you part of the process. Is to make you blindly dislike someone else without thinking why you do it. Because to think about it means you might have to admit you're wrong. And being wrong hurts. And when you think about it, you might realize you are wrong, but then you realize someone else is wrong. And you try to tell them you're going to hurt them when you tell them. And if they think about it, they will hurt and lash out. But it's the only way to fix the broken system that we have created for you as the adults surrounding you right now. The system's so broken, you could be killed in the streets tomorrow by the people meant to protect you and they will face no repercussions. In a system that broken, when there's no repercussion, you may be called upon to press your bodies against the machinery until it breaks, until you can build something new. No one wants to be Winston, but you may still have to destroy the machinery with your own lives. And if you do, you can build that better world as you see fit. You will have to give 175%. And I believe in you fighting Strickia forms. Go Owls! Hoot hoot! Hoot hoot! That was lovely.
great. Um, I, I would like to take a moment to really thank everyone. Go ahead and sit. You, you, uh, <laughs> you didn't have to come back to school. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And we would have understood. Mm -mm. But you did. And now you're here. Mm -hmm. And we're in front of you. Talking to you. Thank you for getting out of bed. For putting on clothing. More or less. For traveling here. There is a bus strike on. So I, I know it was difficult. More so than usual. But uh, we really appreciate it. I know we're not a very big school or a very flashy school. Maybe we're not a school at all. But I think inside of our hearts, we really do have that special school spirit spark that everyone loves so much at all sports occasions. Cheerleaders have it, and Principal Lyon can interrupt me <laughs> at any time. All right, so we're going to start the, uh, I assume this is the fourth semester. I actually lost count mm. uh, from all of the various tragedies that we've yeah. dealt with. And we're just kind of biding for time now. Oh, oh, Principal Lyon. What up? I was listening to all of your riveting synopses. Oh, yes. <laughs> Of the books for the bookathon. Read a book. Um, I was Please. wondering if you could uh, let me know whether or not you think that uh, these would be good books for me to read. I would oh. like. I would like to hear more. I, I I feel like it's too short. I need more books. Okay. Well, I know that you like dark and depressing things. Yep. There you go. John Stein. <laughs> John Steinbeck. The Grapes of Wrath. No, I've read The Pearl. Is it the same? Uh, I, I'm gonna just say no. I don't. I, okay. I don't know. Same author, different book. D how is that possible? Don't know. Easily. Two books. Mm. Oh, there's multiple. There's more than oh, two. Oh yeah, he's written a lot. Oh. I. The only other one I can think of, I think, is called East of Eden. I guess I really need this bookathon then. And yeah, you do. Um, so these grapes were full of wrath. Um. Farmers were farming some grapes, and then the Dust Bowl hit. And Green grapes are. I purple? I think I think they were the the the, the wine grapes. Ah. 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 Okay. Great. Uh, that's a great book. Uh, what can you tell me about Frankenstein? Oh, this one this one's like right up your alley because it's uh -huh. about a dude, uh -huh. and his name is Doctor. Into dudes. Yeah. Well, you're into dark dudes, and this guy was the darkest. Super into dark so, dudes. So, uh, dark dude. Uh, like depressed, like makes a man out of bits and pieces of other men. Oops, he got a wrong brain, makes a psychopath. His name is Dr. Frankenstein. A lot of people think it's the monster, but no. What's it, the monster's name? Uh, the monster. Oh. Oh. Take Frankenstein's name book. Coach Furman is talking. Can't hear him. Can't hear him. Uh, apparently the Can't monster takes his name halfway through the book. Side note about this. This is written by a lady. <gasps> we, another lady another, author. Another lady. Mary Shelley wrote it. Gary, I see that finger in the way. Stacy, get excited! <laughs> Stacy is very excited. I, don't know. <coughs> uh, I think I have another. One more. One more. How about One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Did, did you need a Xanax? Featuring. Uh, thanks for the I Xana don't need any Xanax. Thanks for the Xanax. Uh, but please don't no. offer it to the children um, either. I'll, I'll take uh, a handful out back. Featuring okay. Jack Nicholson. Now, <laughs> is he in the book? He he is in the book. Mm. He plays a character named Red. Red. I don't know if that's true. This book is orange. <laughs> um, he. Uh, I know that there is a very large uh, native people's man in it, and he mm -hmm. destroys a sink. Spoiler alert. Throws it out a window and then just leaves. Sounds very strong. It is. Now is this inside the cuckoo's nest? Uh, it is. All right. All right. Okay. Great. I read a like, book, read, please. I would like everyone to read at least five books by five. tomorrow. Five. Um, and uh, give us uh, full reports by the end of the week. I will know if you waited till the end of the week to read them, uh, because 
Well, we're principals and that's what we do. We know when you're lying. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I would like to give a big thanks to the public access studio that came out to our modest school to tape this assembly. <laughs> give it up for them, guys. All right. We're going to get the world pumped about Peaport Junior High. Hoo <laughs> hoo. You know, I, I think I know a great way of doing it. How? Let's do our fighting song. Ready, guys? Yeah. 